All right. Welcome, welcome, minions, to episode 91. Is that what this is? 91? That's crazy. Something like that. Who would have thought it would take us five, six years to get to 91 episodes? It's a quality, <laughs> not a quantity thing, man. Yes. Remember that's, that, folks. <laughs> that's that's what we're going with, at least. So <laughs> welcome back. And we are super excited to bring to you another installment of the Hailming Power Hour about another movie that we both enjoyed and hope that you will go and check out and enjoy as well. Yes. That movie being Jaws 3. Nope, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Jaws, is that the one with, with Michael Caine? <laughs> Michael Caine. No, no. Michael Caine's in four. <laughs> Michael Caine's in four, right? We, re we really know this, so we're just kidding. <laughs> no, no. That's the one with, uh, with, with, uh, that's the one where they're going to sing somebody up there really likes me. <laughs> That's the one in 3D. Yeah. And, and it's Just got three, a Louis Gossett Jr. in it. You can't handle the Lou. Okay. Uh, no, no. 3D sharks can't handle the Lou. <laughs> sea, underwater Sea World can't handle the Lou. So we'll throw this out there. Yeah. If, if you fans listening want us to cover Jaws 3, just for the heck of it sometime, let us know because we're down for that because – we can't handle the Lou either. Jaws 3? I, I remember watching it once upon a time. I'm not super familiar with it. You know, I, I couldn't quote lines, but... It's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> that's, that's the, I think that was the tagline. That's the tagline, Jaws 3. Jaws 3. The, the gift that gives keeps, keeps on, on giving. giving. <laughs> it's Christmas time, and people at Ocean World are waiting for their gift. Santa Jaws is ready. Santa Jaws. I think that's out there. That's what's sad. Oh my god. I think yeah, that's actually the original, which which I don't hate, but uh, but we're not gonna talk about any of that kind of no I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the word loosely crap. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about another kind of crap. And we're gonna talk about Sinister. Uh, I don't think enough people talk about this movie. Man, 2012. Sinister. Yeah, I, I happened across it when it was it showed up on one of my uh, streaming services, and and I was I was riveted from the the intro and what an intro. I mean, yeah, yeah. And, and we'll talk about this as we go along, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, we keep bringing up the word giallo or the Italian cinema when we talk about all this stuff. This movie lives and breathes off of that Italian storytelling where you're just getting little bites of information as you go along and it has the big wham payoff at the end. It's very geolic. I think I just made up a word. Geolic. Geolic. Yeah, a Miam Geolic was was in Blossom, I think. <laughs> yes. Now 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 she hosts Jeopardy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. No, no, I agree with you 100%. I mean, I it, it's got some found footage in there it's it's got so so i've got a lot to say about this movie but you know i think right. we should stick with the format and we should just jump right in so so as i uh let in uh rick what was your first reason to check out sinister uh the fact that the bad guy in the movie is the guitar player from slipknot <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, yeah, he's definitely not far from it. He's, he's, uh, he's got that King Diamond feel. Yeah, yeah, he's got sure. the same, it's almost the same mask as the dude that plays for Slipknot. So I was like, wow, look at this. History repeats, folks. Well, I he's mean, he's not just a bad guy. It's, well, he's, it's, it's a twist. On, yeah, it's the, it's a twist on the boogeyman, right? Right, right. Uh, we always associate nowadays with Michael Myers, but. I mean, he's just a serial killer who's just kind of nonchalant, likes to hide in shadows. This guy's the boogeyman. Yeah. But sadly, when I think of, you know, when people write, you know, I think they write Mr. Boogie, right? When the kids are writing all the stuff, they write Mr. Boogie. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking of like a dude with a big felt hat <laughs> going, get down. <laughs> Let's hustle. <laughs> Mr. Well, Boogie. Know, it's Kitty because apparently he um he makes his uh makes his spiel to the kids and and convinces them over time to commit these murders. I'm um, just thinking about the selling of that too. He's probably going, "My name is Bugle," and the kids can't get it. Right, so fine, just 
Just call me Mr. Boogie. What the heck? Call me Mr. Boogie. Mr. Yeah. Boogie. <laughs> just I we I just want you to kill your family. Yeah. Okay? I love I love the nightlife. I got to boogie. You gotta kill your parents. <laughs> <laughs> well, so my first reason, okay. I, I've got some my first reason is that it jumps right in. Yeah. Okay, like the very first thing you see in this movie is the very first snuff film. Um, you know, what was it? hang in with the family or family <laughs> hanging out is what it's called like so they all have these like oh you know family barbecue family hanging out and then it gets some horrible twist on that where mowing the lawn oh, oh man it's you know because they're all in that so so in case you haven't seen it there are these films these real uh these these eight millimeter uh reel to reel films that uh, show up in the attic of this house this guy's moved in there because he's a true crime novelist and, and this family was killed in the house. And these films are just other families getting killed in other ways. And yeah. uh, they just, uh, the films just appeared there. Right. And they were all like, you know, years apart. They're all like, what year? So it's like lawn work, 86, sleepy time, 98, pool party, 66, family barbecue, 79. So they take place at about 30 years apart most of the time. 30 years 20 years i don't know i didn't do the math it seems like every decade i mean I, what, I just told you the years so they take place <laughs> a span apart in 30 years well you know the, the idea is that that they it's not a single person it can't be some single murderer right. because right. they're so far apart it's it's a it's a trend yeah it's trendy it's boogie it's trendy. <laughs> kill your family it's trendy <laughs> Yeah, and again, that, uh, that 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 is such a original idea because we always talk about the found footage thing. I know you're you're a bigger fan of found footage than I am, but when you use it the right way, like this, mm -hmm. I think it really adds to storytelling versus you just being shown the film and it not not being any real context of affecting anybody else. So this is a twist on found footage. Yeah, it, it, he actually found some footage, but it's <laughs> but it but it's it's part of the story. Yes, you know it, they're made to look amateurish, like a like mm -hmm. a family. And that's another thing that makes it super creepy. They're made to look like family movies, like home movies, and then they end in these horrible, ghastly murders that um you know you're just not prepared for. You know, watching yep. them throw the ball around or have a picnic, and then and then it cuts. <laughs> And and then they're gruesomely murdered by somebody who's also holding the camera. It's it's a really right. disconcerting kind of thing. Right. So I guess my next reason is you could read re relabel re forty five percent of this movie is Ethan Hawk sneaks around his house. Yeah. <laughs> Dude is constantly getting freaked out about stuff. He'll go in the room. The projector will be playing on its own. He'll turn it off. He'll leave. It comes back. It's on. He's starting to see things in this footage. Again, it's it's the whole giallo idea of just little bitty clues as you go along in it building. Um, yeah, this is and another Italian thing. It's full of this creepy atmosphere, even though this is just a normal house, a la shock, if you will, right? Where you don't know if it's all in their head, or is is it something really going on in the house? Uh, very atmospheric. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And so, so you know, you didn't even mention the scariest thing in this is uh, Fred Thompson. <laughs> no, I kid. He's in there, but he he plays a Fred Thompson character for sure. Um, no, I was I agree with you, and I think that that one of the things I like about this movie is it it isolates you with Ethan yep. Hawke's character with uh, yep. Elliston. And, and he's, you know, so this is something I noticed on rewatching that multiple times people ask him about, you know, why he does it. Like he's looking at interviews that he did because he had one really popular novel where he got it right. Yep. This true crime where, the cops got it wrong and he actually brought justice to this family 
And then he went on the circuit about it. And since then, he's done two books that were off the mark. They didn't do well. They were wrong. One of them, like a killer came back and, and killed again. Yeah. So yeah. he's, he's, cre- he's, he's fallen from grace and people keep asking him, you know, why do you do this? And, and he gives them these rote answers, you know, this, this, uh, I do it for justice for the families, but it becomes very evident through this story. Like as you go through this journey with him, that that's not true at all. Right. He does it because he's seeking that fame. He that's does right. it because he loves the, you know, just like anybody he's, he's wanting to entertain, but he's, he's not willing to be honest about that right. with anybody, yep. even his family. Yep. And, yep. and for that reason, he, he kind of gets punished for it. Absolutely. Well, he even, you know, you see him break with his wife there and he actually, honey, this is, this is it. I mean, if I figure this one out, this could be the, so, I mean, it's even, you know, that's kind of sowing where his mind is at the time. So yeah, like you yep. said, he's, he's chasing the fame. He gives somebody else the other reasons, but you know, and there's probably some truth to it, but it's not the whole truth. I mean, there's, he's not 100% evil, you know, no. I'm not saying that, no, but I'm no. saying that when you, like I said, you're isolated with him. Yeah. And as he does this research and you're along with him, it becomes evident that he's not doing this for noble purposes. He's not doing this because he wants to really solve the crime. He just wants to get it right again and get back on track with his career right. where he felt like he's, he's fallen away. And, uh, and you know, I, I don't think that that's really manipulated by the evil in the film, but it's certainly something that he has to come to terms with before he can be a successful protagonist, you know, like, right. Like I said, it isolates you with him yep. and his flaws become your flaws because you were on the journey with him. Well, and I think that that's really important. He's very human. I mean, even though, you know, he's doing this, but this is what he does for a living. And, yeah. you know, he's not any different than anybody else. Everybody wants to be recognized for what to do and have some popularity, some, some fame, do better for their families. This guy's traveling around, putting his family in some of the worst conditions because oh, man. just picking up and going, you know, all the time. And, you know, uh, yeah, I, I think that kind of draws you to him because you don't want to see him necessarily get punished for anything because you're right there with him. So that's a yeah. that's a good way of, of it working, too. Well, and, and his uh, yeah, much like in the Evil Dead that we were just talking mm-hmm. about he's isolated also because he can't go to law enforcement. They already believe he's there to make them look like fools because yep. that's, that's what he does. He, right. he reinvestigates these crimes. And then he says, Hey, by the way, you know, you guys got it wrong and I'm going to write a book about it. So they're already reticent to deal with him. And then he kind of doesn't want to share with them for his own reasons. So right. furthermore, he, he just, he can't get any help from anybody because he's on this alone. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that, that isolation, just, they really work on that, right? The fact of dimming the lights, turning on the projector, yeah, hanging up yeah. the sheet, all the things that's going on, the, the open windows to outside. I mean, everything is a, you know, setting you up for, you're constantly looking around the room in these scenes, you're seeing if there's anything outside, which could be, may not be, you know, it's that whole factor again, the whole Michael Myers thing. Is he there? Is he not there? You just want to assume that he is. And that, that routine where he takes out the projector and puts the new film in and it's, it's kind of a one, two, three, you know, his hands on the machine. It's a, yep. it's, it's really well shot. Yes. The app, like you said, the atmosphere is fantastic. Yeah. A lot of it is just Ethan Hawke too. Like, you know, his family yep. plays a pivotal role, but it's mostly about him dealing with them, him dealing with the crime and him dealing with himself. How about the sleeping ability of this family? <laughs> Dude, they, they can, can sleep, sleep through, through anything. <laughs> I guess maybe it's just kind of normal with his job, but man, I mean, he's going around hearing things, knocking things over. Nobody gets Yelling? up and says, what was that? You know? <laughs> yeah, he falls out of the attic and he's like, oh, and he gets to the bottom and nobody comes to check on him. I keep thinking, like, did somebody come at this point? No, nobody ever comes to help him out. Maybe that's they're part asleep. of the problem. Yeah, they're asleep, man. The only awakening they had is when the boy has the 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 screaming fit, right? Yeah, the night terrors, which was it was terrifying. Yeah, yeah. It, you kind of think for a minute it's going to be the Grudge or something because uh, his right. son has a night terror and he's in one of the moving boxes and he does a does a gymnastics arch out of the back of this box and it's like, what the hell am I looking at? You know. 
Yeah. I man, I, I agree. That's one thing I talk about this film a lot is even though it's a production from a company I'm not too crazy about, this is a very well shot movie. A lot of yeah. times they're kind of, I mean, quality is always pretty decent, but I just think this is the better movie that's come out from this company in a while. Yeah, well, I mean, I, and like you said, it's it's a, it, it's simple. Yes. There, there's a there's a handful of actors. There's there's a one set more or less. The the uh, the the films are in different places, but they're intended to look grainy and amateur so i mean really the production cost probably wasn't a whole lot and they could they could sure, deal sure. with some uh some artistic cinematography they really didn't go for any light-hearted stuff either you know that's no. that's something i thought was really different with this one too it's it's very melodramatic dramatic through most of it and then when it starts happening, it starts hitting you over the head with a hammer. Is that is that one of the films? I don't know. All I know is if you don't know the guys there, if you listen for a BC Rich guitar going, gun, 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 then you know, yep, he's behind that bush over there. Man, and and like that's another <laughs> thing I was gonna say. The the music in it is less like a soundtrack and more like a soundscape. Yes, it's got a lot of sounds and there's chants and there's drums and by the end, that music kicks. Yeah, like yeah, it's it's great. The the drums, the 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 ritual sound of it, it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, you know, I was I was watching it with headphones in, which I kind of recommend if you have it because I, I think I that's something I pulled from it. Just the 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 music and the sounds in it, they really add a lot of creep factor. Yep. So Speaking I think I said of, something about him creeping around the house at night. Yeah. Creep factor, just for all of you that are listening, if you're not watching this episode on YouTube, uh, in honor of this movie and it being creepy, I've got a picture of Big Enos and Little Enos from <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit as my background because it just felt needed. Classic. <laughs> One time I just like to punch him in the face. <laughs> Let me hit him, Daddy. Let me hit him. <laughs> In in my notes here, by the way, you know, like like you're talking about, I said there's a lot of nightly creep walking. Yes, yeah, like he creeps around the house. Like I can't wake anybody up, but I've got to investigate this crime. Right, I got to keep getting juiced up and and watching these movies, but I can't wake anybody up. Yeah, but he he always makes a lot of racket. But I mean, just the sound of the projector alone would keep most people awake. So yeah, and some people. Uh, they, like you said, maybe they're just used to it. What about the dog? Yeah. So there's there's a there's a scene here where there the, he she, he goes out to the the wood line to pick up his bat because he he saw a bagul in the in the woods, and uh, when he goes to pick it up, there's this dog growling at him. Yeah. And then when it pans back, all the missing kids from the other murders are are behind him, and they're yeah. all ghastly. Yeah. And. Uh, that's a hell of a scene, man. That was that was my next thing is scary, creepy dead kids. Yeah. And they just kind of like hanging out. Like the, they're like the 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 lost boys or something, like you know, jumping in and out of windows and under stuff. Like, and I guess he can't see them, but kind of sense them. Right. It's it's really well done. Yeah. Yeah. Using that slow motion factor too, man. Like the one that's coming down the hall, like they're playing a game and he mm -hmm. runs and he just you know disappears. So <laughs> <laughs> so what about vincent d'onofrio well i mean what about him <laughs> I can't, so i, I don't what, what do you think about him in this movie because because i i just want to know what you think and then i'll tell you what i think i don't think <laughs> i think he was phoning it in yeah literally yeah. and figuratively <laughs> like, like he's on a Zoom call, and you know, the, some uh, the, his. So at at some point, the uh, the main character gets the help of a deputy who's like, "I want to be in your credits as Mister So and So who helped right. you." And he's like, all yeah. right. So he tells him about this Bagul thing and about that, and he said, "Well, you know, you, you found this occult symbol at some of the murders. Uh, sometimes the the cops will call this guy in, and he tells him about a professor at a nearby university." So you know, they, they they have this university, this professor who's the uh, the occult expert, and it's Vincent D'Onofrio. I don't think he does a bad job, 
but it, it certainly is kind of like hey it's not what we're know, used to your pictures it's real super creepy i right. think i know a little right. bit about this so i'll check it out there's a book right here i read some stuff and i'll look into it for you hey aren't you that guy from the thing like yeah and you know being vincent and Afrio, he might be just that that's the way he thought the character would be but it really does seem a lot like Maybe they didn't pay him a lot or maybe they're like, you know, like, this is just a Zoom call. Can you do it real quick for me as a solid? Yeah. But um, it's not what we're used to seeing him put out for sure. And, and yeah, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, that, that's the other thing about this movie, too, is you look at the credits, you go, wow, OK, we, we've got a heck of a lineup here. Yeah. But yeah, it's his performance is a little lackluster, but it is what it is for a reason, too. Right. Because you don't want to take the focus off of he's just there right. to give you more information for the story. He's. Not really going to play much of a of a part other than that. Yeah, and I didn't think he did a bad job. I was just that's why I wanted to yeah. see like maybe you'd come back and say no. I think that's just kind of the personality of the character. I I couldn't uh, tell. It seemed uh, like he was just kind of collecting a paycheck. I'm again, it's you know. not the level of what we're used to seeing from him. But maybe that's what they wanted. And again, it might have been he charged too much to do it. So here's. Here's what I'll do for you for this amount at this time, and there you go. But it doesn't really hurt the movie at all. Yeah, I agree. It's almost like anybody could have played that role. It didn't have to yeah, be yeah. I mean, somebody was, on that level. It was cool to see him, and he didn't sure. mess it up. I was just, you know, that thought it was kind of, a, it's kind of a throwaway role, like your yeah. point. Yeah. Right. So he points out that Bagul, you know, it, it leads to a Babylonian god, the eater of children. And, yeah. and uh, you know, at that point, man, so I, I cannot stress how how simplistic and how just as literally disconcerting this film is. Yeah. You know, it's it, it, you're on the journey with this one guy. He's fixated on this crime. He keeps seeing these other crimes. He doesn't want to look at it. You know, he's desensitized and he doesn't want to look at them because these families are getting murdered. And and by the time the payoff comes around, yeah, it's it's incredibly good. Yes. Yeah, it's when he really starts seeing the un the uh, uncut footage of everything and starts putting it all together. Yeah, I mean that you know the whole fact of he does what he does what anybody would do, right? The point you just get freaked out enough, you're like, all right, we're out of here, load up, we're getting out. But you can't leave it behind, right? Right. right. So he, he, the he fact burns that, it all. Yeah, and they end up going going to another house, and lo and behold goes upstairs there's everything he just destroyed all the film all the cameras everything that he set on fire and it's and, it's there again and now they say extended cut yeah. so he he actually goes to the trouble of like of of taking the the film reels and adding the extended footage to it because you know whether or not you you believe it's evil the curiosity's got in at this point and he's got to know so at the end of this Spoiler alert, you know, you, all the the snuff films end and it's the missing child that has drugged and murdered their entire family. Right. And it's just like an extra, you know, 10 seconds of them like, you know, one of them skipping away from the the bloody lawnmower or the or or jumping into the pool after all the 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 family right. was drowned in it. It's yeah. just really really creepy and it's all the kids that have been showing up as ghosts. It's yeah. it's really bad and and the let's talk about this do you think yeah do you think the kids were holding the camera and doing this stuff or you think somebody else mr 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 boogie was maybe the director holding the camera because and that one thing for sure but the other thing was can we talk about the arm strength that a kid would have to have to hang somebody in the tree and pull them up and hold a camera at the same time that's some strong well, ass, ass kids right there. So, 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 if you were, so, so the the kids got a a pruning saw. Yeah, and he's in the and she's in the tree, and she's sawing off a branch that's super heavy, that's counterweighting right. her family on the other side. <laughs> and they show that that scene. It's the most. I, I got to admit, it's the all of them are difficult to watch. Sure, but that one's probably the most creatively disconcerting. Right. I mean, I like the idea of them just pulling with one hand, though. 
I like that. It's, that would have been my version of the movie. She's, right? she's got like the monster arm, you know, <laughs> got the Billy arm over I here. Got the Billy her. arm. <laughs> and you know that. Yeah, and, and it, that's. Can and we and talk I, about another... the fact that they move into the house where the people got hang, hung, and the and the like half sawed off branch is still there on the tree. That's how <laughs> soon it is <laughs> yeah. after this whole thing went down. And when did this happen? Oh, yeah, maybe a year ago. I don't know. Oh, and, so. and she's like. You, you told me it wasn't. He said, well, you asked if it was two houses down from the murder and it was the <laughs> house. So that's, I technically didn't lie. And she's like, so these people were killed here? No, it was backyard. Yeah, not in like, the come house. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, you know, he knew he knew she wasn't going to like it. So he didn't tell yeah. her because yeah. that's that was his mode. The, uh, the kid burning his parents in the car. I mean, it, oh, that's the other wrong. thing about this too is and this comes from you and I because we're parents and that thing does something psychologically to you too, right? That makes it scarier because our goal in life is to supply and, and be able to defend, protect our kids Yeah. for them to have something happen to them for them to turn around and do the worst thing possible to you is one of the scariest things you can ever imagine. It's, it's definitely a breach of trust. Right. You know, inside the family that this thing, it's not some murderer coming to kill them. It's somebody from within. And right. yeah, I, I agree. Like the, this, the, but this, this end game. Okay. So it's so tight. He sees these extended cuts and he puts two and two together just a minute too late, you know, because like, it's like earlier in the movie, his daughter made him some coffee, right? They even like, it was right. a little montage of the French press pushing the coffee and he likes it a certain way. And then she hands it to him through the door. This is in the old, the, in the murder house. Yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, he's like, oh, thanks. And then his phone rings and he's gone, right? He just ignores the family. Yeah. And so then at the end, you know, he looks right. in the bottom of his coffee yeah, it's the it's the shimmering green liquid that everybody's had that drugs the family. Yep. And then he had two and two together just a little too late. He takes yep. the phone call from the deputy just a minute too late. Like everything's coming in yep. that he's been ignoring. And it just all hits right before his family's the next one in line. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, just the fact of it's his daughter. And I mean, you see her, she's got them tied up. They're on the floor and she pulls out an ax, goes to town. That's right. And, and then it's very shining. It, very much. Yeah. Very much. And so, uh, there's a lot of shining in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And again, atmospheric, all that stuff ties into this movie. So well, plus uh, he's, he's a writer. <laughs> he's working alone yep. and he's not going, you know, he's not the killer, but killer's not far. Right. Right. And then you get the scene at the end where they disappear into the film. Yeah. He grabs the little girl and pulls her back into the film and they go off and is, wow. And your question about, you know, is he directing is the kid filming or whatever? <laughs> like, you know, I know that was like, I think that it's kind of like the ring where Samara is making the images with her mind. Possibly. And yeah. they, they tried to explain a lot of this in the second one. I, I read an article yeah. about the second one. And somebody was saying, oh, the problem with the first one was you didn't care about anybody. It's like, no, you missed the point. The, the point was that these people are doomed. And yeah. it's because of the willful ignorance of the main character. And that's what makes it so tragic. <clears throat> yep. The second one, they tried to make it. They, they, they just, I mean. I haven't sucked. seen the second one. I haven't seen I, I hadn't either. I, I read this article and I was like, well, you know, I saw that it was the last day that it was on Netflix. So I was uh -huh. like, I'll watch it. It's not worth it. Oh, wow. Okay. It's, it's, it's bad. They, they tried to have the ghost kids be more, more of a character. And like, they mm -hmm. showed the, them like talking to the kid next in line and they had a bunch of stuff going on. And then, you know, at the end, there's a hero that shows up. It's yeah. I'm sure somebody likes it out there and that's sure. fine, but you know, that, that, we can go on all day about sequels and the problems with it because they, they end up trying to humanize things that should be left alone. What was scary about them ends up getting watered down 
throughout history. I don't care what series you're looking at. They're never as scary as they are when they first hit the screen. And they, and they tried to give like more complication to the murders too. They were like, Oh, we've got to go bigger and badder with these, these murders. Oh, yeah. And, and, uh, and there, there's some creative snuff films in it, but it, it yeah. just, it, it loses some of the charm of the original because it isn't stark. You know, these things aren't as simple and therefore they become more of a set piece right. and less of a, a, of a legitimate discovery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, usually a sequel means less budget, quick writing. Hey, let's cash out on the popularity of this real quick. So that makes a difference, right? So uh, that's, that's unfortunate. I mean, again, there may be some people that, that like it out there. Tell us, and, you know, I, I, the, the, the one thing that somebody said, you know, it was panned with every review I read of it. The only one that said anything good was this one person that said, Hey, what the first one was missing, this one had, and that was a connection to the family. Right. Like I said, I think they missed the, the mark on that. Yeah. And to the one more thing about this first one yeah. that I've got to say, you know, the whole fame thing comes back with that one line that his daughter says at the very end after she kills the family, you know, it was like a house painting, I think is the name of her video, you know, house painting with what? Yeah. <laughs> um, she, and she says to him right before she, uh, she lets him go with the ax. She says, don't worry, daddy, I'll make you famous again. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. there. You know, she knew what he wanted and she right. was going to give it to him. Yeah. And you kind of see the, the how Bagul creeps into these families. It's like something's there and he just pries that loose and then says, you know, here's how we can make all this better. Right. <laughs> wow. It is. It's a, it's a great film. It really caught me by surprise when it came out because uh, I was expecting another run of the mill kind of idea. Uh, yeah. This one hits pretty hard, man. And it makes you think. That's the thing about it. You want to walk away and have something that makes you go, man, those images are kind of hard to shake. And, and yeah, I, I, I'll say that just like, I guess the evil dead 2013, you know, it, it gives you a lot to chew on and then it, it brings it all really tight together at the end. Right. That this, this reveal just happens like, why didn't he see this? Why didn't I see this? And now it's over. Right. And the music at the end is just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome movie. We both recommend it. You should yep. check it out for sure. So that's 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 what we think about this one. Even as time has passed by, it still holds up very, very well. I think so too. Yeah. So because what is it? It's 10 years old now. 10 years old. Or 30 or you know, 20. What what you know, I didn't count. So well, I mean <laughs> wait, hold on. So 1966 to nineteen ninety eight. And then the movies are made in 2012, so 50 years old. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Glad we could figure that out for you. That's what we do. We mathematically break down horror movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hell meeting. <laughs> Not, nothing like how many kills or anything, just like numbers. Right. Yeah, just, you know, how many light bulbs I... are in the house, how many wattage it takes to keep that house furnished. New math. You know? <laughs> new math it's it's just math <laughs> all right man i think that's it for this one you got anything yeah. else you want to add no not at all i think that we we covered it all it's a great movie yep I, I recommend it to any horror fan if you haven't seen it make sure you check it out if you have seen it revisit it and watch it with this new mindset that that danny and i have kind of thrown your way especially with the guitar player part uh <laughs> It's a great movie. It really is. And I think eventually it will be considered a classic. I think I may be wrong on that, but I think it's got different enough material and scary enough to be a classic. I agree. All right. Well, that's it for us. Hey, we'll be coming back with another episode next week where we cover from beyond. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure you check that out from Danny and Rick. We say adios. See ya.